What's going on everybody? It's your boy Cody Myler and it is April 10th, hump day. We're trying to get through this week. It's been a good week so far here in Dallas. Remember we're over at Next Rep Fitness. Uh, like I always let you guys know what the weather's like. It is 80 degrees here and it's finally getting to be the weather that I like. I, I like anywhere between 78 to about 81. That's my world. I know some people out there like it really, really cold. Some people like it really hot. This is my world I, I enjoy this um, so let's go ahead we've got a guest today uh, I don't want to talk too long because I want to go in and and uh, really start picking his head about everything he has going on so let me go ahead and jump into what has been going on uh, the last week in my world so uh, if you guys have been following on the YouTube channel on on Instagram more on Instagram than anything else you know my wife and I were doing the 75 hard that Andy Frisilla did along you know about March 6 that's when he introduced it and we're still still going no, nothing's nothing's uh, uh, got us off track we went out this weekend with friends and they all enjoyed themselves had drinks ate whatever they want we stayed strong and, and uh, you know doing our thing so today is day 17 out of 75 I don't I don't feel no pressure it's it's easy breezy we're gonna knock this out I'm not worried I keep telling Andy I'm like yeah, this was too easy man you made you made it too easy <laughs> so anyways um, we got that going on um, something we tried out you guys know that for the last six years I've been coaching it but now I'm like really 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 uh, deep into uh, you know, using it for myself for longer periods of time. I'm a keto guy, so over the uh, weekend on well, actually Friday, uh, we had these cupcakes and bagels delivered to the gym by these people, uh, Keto Delights McKinney out of McKinney, Texas, and they actually deliver wherever you want. And they they delivered it all the way to the gym, and the cupcakes are 1.6 carbs, and the bagels are 2.4 carbs, and they were great. Definitely, definitely highly recommend it if you guys are on a low carb diet or you're diabetic or a keto person. Definitely look them up. I, I will totally um, keep buying from them. There's a couple other places here in Dallas that we've, we've bought, you know, for like birthdays. You know, my wife and I, we still try to keep it uh, low carb, keto. And so we've gone and bought cakes from these other places. But these guys so far, hands down, are the best. So I think right now you can only find them on Facebook. Uh, so look up Keto Delights McKinney. Don't, now like I said, totally, totally worth it. Their bagels are the bomb. I, I enjoyed those. Um, let's see, what else? Also, I really haven't talked much about this. We've been using them for, let's see, four or five months, and I haven't even mentioned anything about them just because, uh, you know, I like to use things for a while and, and see if I really enjoy it and what they're about. And there, this company contacted me, like I said, about four or five months ago, and it's called Fix Food, but it's spelled F-I-X-E. And they're a local company here in Dallas, and it's these guys, and what their mission is is to make meals healthy healthy meals as inexpensive as possible so literally there they have meals where it's five dollars to feed two people which is insane so like there's other food companies out there meal delivery companies I mean usually they, they average between eight to ten dollars per person so their whole mission is to feed people healthy food for under five dollars for two people and so my wife and I, they have a paleo program, they have a nutritionist that, that develops every week a paleo program, a keto program, a vegetarian program, and then just a overall basic health program that you can eat. And we buy two weeks of dinners for 74 bucks. I mean, two weeks of dinners, that's 10 dinners, it's not, we don't, we don't do the, the weekends because we do our own things, so that's 10, 10 dinners for 74 bucks. And what they do, it's kind of like Green Chef in a way, you know how they send you all the ingredients and then they, they uh, give you the recipe and then you cook it, well that's what they do, but what they do is they find the closest grocery store to your house. And then they use companies like Shipped or uh, Amazon Fresh or you know all those other those delivery companies uh, favor, and they're the ones that go pick up the food and they deliver it straight to your house. And they're in the works, you know. They're still trying to work some things out. 
Um, they've changed some things on their website just recently to make it more user friendly and understand how to how to order. They have all the macros to everything, so it's really. I, I, I really think you guys should go check it out. Uh, I think they do nationwide as well. I know for sure here in Dallas. Like I said, they're local. It's called Fix Food. So give them a shot. Check it out. Go on their website, um, and if you if you like it, let me know comment on one of my Instagram posts. Sometimes I post their food and I haven't even really said it's their food yet. Just some people have been like, wow, that looks good. So from here on out, I'll go ahead and let you guys know when it's one of those fixie food uh, recipes. In fact, last night we had one. It was uh, stuffed stuffed uh, uh, bell pepper with all kinds of different meat and turkey meat and all kinds of stuff. And so avocado. And so I'll, I'll post that later so that way you guys can see that. Plus I'll show you pictures of what the bagels and the cupcakes look like too. They just use uh, uh, stevia and xylitol for their sweeteners so it doesn't uh, spike your insulin levels up. So, um, man guys, I think that's all I want to talk about. Like I said, I really want to make this quick. So let's go ahead and get a word from one of our sponsors. Do you like fresh pressed juices? If so, check out Raw Roots Juices, spelled R-A Roots. They are located in Dallas, Texas, but can ship nationwide. So if you're looking for juice cleanse or a daily juice, use this code MILERFLEX for 15% off. All right, all right. So uh, let's go ahead and let's drop right into... What the fitness? That's right. So this week we got a lot of basketball again. Uh, I don't know how many of you guys watched the game on Sunday and on Monday, but the Baylor girls, they won. They brought it home to Texas. Actually, uh, that girl, um, Lauren Cox, I think her name, she she played in Flower Mound uh, High School, and that's next to where I live up here in Texas, so that whole area is going crazy for them. And then Virginia won. Unfortunately, they beat Texas Tech. You know, I got a lot of friends. Actually, a uh, real quick story, uh, their head coach, Chris Beard. So when I was a assistant at Jacksonville College, we had this seven-foot kid that we recruited from overseas, Thomas. And this is when um, Coach Knight, Bobby Knight, was, was the coach at Texas Tech. Well, Chris Beard was their second assistant under uh, Pat Knight's, or uh, Bobby Knight's son, Pat Knight. And so I got to know Chris really well. He came down a lot. Uh, they were really trying to recruit the player that we had. So I met him quite a few times. And um, yeah, he was a really good guy. He, was, he loved, loved, loved the game of coaching. So it didn't surprise me when he ended up becoming the, uh, the head coach for, for Texas Tech. He actually, I've got a t-shirt he gave me one time. And he's a really good dude. I feel sorry that, that they didn't win, but Hell, I'm, I'm happy as hell for them at the same time. They actually made it to the final, or to the final four into the championship. Um, let's see. Did you guys see this story floating around on Facebook, this video of a lady, it, I believe it was in Utah. I don't know what the hell she was doing, but it's a video of inside of Anytime Fitness. And there's this older gentleman. He's on the treadmill. And the treadmill is literally right up against the front windows and this SUV just comes piling, I mean just plowing through the windows and just goes right through the gym, hits the treadmill that he's on, pushes him all the way back like 10, 12, 15 feet. Luckily the office door that was behind him wasn't locked. It was early in the morning but it was open. I guess the manager or somebody was there and he was able to fly through there and not get crushed with the treadmill and the car and Guys, if you have not seen this, go find it on, on, on uh, Facebook. The lady just nonchalantly gets out of her car like, oh, wow, I'm, I'm sorry, are you okay? We don't know what the hell. Supposedly in the report, there was an off-duty um, police officer in the gym working out. And supposedly the girl, after she gets out, she went in the truck to leave. And the cop got her and was like, uh, hold up, no, you're not going anywhere. She didn't have any shoes on, she just had socks, and she just was blaming that her brakes weren't working, her brakes weren't working. So, I don't know, I haven't gotten to read any more follow-up on that, I haven't seen any more reports, but that's 
pretty freaking crazy. And if you haven't seen the video, go look it up. It's it's pretty wild. Let's see. Um, speaking about basketball, also go back to it. Last night was Dirk. His it was his last home game. The big 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 boy. I mean, unfortunately, after 21 years. He's done. He officially announced his retirement with the Mavericks. Uh, it was sad to watch, but also we all know he looks like Tin Man out there. I mean, people are just going past him. You know, he's a liability defensively, but it's going to be something that uh, uh, it'll be different next year not seeing him out there in a Mavs uniform. But they did a, an awesome ceremony for him. Uh, they brought some of the guys that he looked up to when he was young, Scotty. Charles Barkley, Larry Bird, Sean Kemp, Detlef Shrimp, and so it was good. I, I Normally I'm asleep, but today's Wednesday, so I didn't have to be here until 6 a.m., so I normally go to sleep at 10. I had to stay up late for that one. Uh, the days I got to be here at 5.30, I go to sleep at 9.30 in, at, at night, so I was like, okay, I'll, I'll stay up late, late for this one and watch. Um, for a lot of people out there that are, you know, you're really deep into following fitness, uh, you know, influencers or bodybuilders or anything, if you know who Dana Bailey is, I just saw this yesterday, she just posted it on, on her Instagram, Dana Bailey, she is a, a Miss Olympia figure, uh, she's won first place, I think also, it was either second or third, I think. Um, but she's married to uh, Rob Bailey, and they own um, a gym. I can't remember where the gym is right now, but they got a supplement line and all that good stuff. Well, she is in the hospital now because she has Rombat. And what that is, is when she, she even said, she goes, if you would have told me that overtraining is real, I would have slapped you in the face because there's no, no such thing as overtraining. But there really is and and what this rombat is is when you train your muscles so excessively i mean to an extent where they can't handle it anymore they actually start producing a protein that goes into your bloodstream that is is can make you ill or possibly can die from it uh it's it's a serious serious effect actually it was really common about six years ago uh, maybe between six to eight years ago, when CrossFit just like really like took a took a hit, and they were taking all these average people that have never worked out ever intensely and putting them through a you know a hardcore CrossFit workout, and especially doing pull ups and getting on the GHD. Those were the two main main um, exercises or pieces of equipment that were causing this this rom romdod and. So anyways, she is in the hospital right now. Uh, so it looks like she's getting a good recovery. So if you're following Dana Bailey, uh, you can see that she kind of told her story. I think hers, it was, she did a, a, a CrossFit workout. It's her first CrossFit workout she's done in, in quite a while. And hers came from doing the uh, GHD uh, hamstring curls. So it's interesting when you, you really got to you know, watch yourself. There's, there's a fine line between really going hard and intense to possibly being in the hospital. And she's a professional, you know, so uh, just got to watch yourself and be safe when you're out there training and pushing your body as hard as you can. Uh, I actually heard this on the Howard Stern Show, which of all places I'm going to get a fitness or wellness uh, topic from. but. Uh, it caught my attention because I actually know a lady that works here at the gym. She, she has a CPOD. And this is something that the University of Colorado in Boulder, they've done a study on and there's this device and it's called inspiratory muscle training. And so it's this device that you breathe into and breathe out. And what it does is it, it gives you resistance as you're breathing in, but it also gives you resistance breathing out, training all those muscles um, within your within your throat and then training your lungs. And so also they've had um, like more, uh, like the Olympic athletes that are doing more endurance training. 
it's helped with their cardiovascular so that way they don't have to go out and run so much or um, some of the skiers and that type of stuff they don't have to do that as much they can use this device and they really you know they're breathing hard and heavy to train their lungs so that way they can get better uh, you know cardiorespiratory performance it's also uh, lowers your blood pressure and it helps those people that have CPOD to strengthen their lungs so that way they can breathe a lot better so I saw that I, I looked it up online I found I think the device is only like 30 40 bucks so I told uh, the lady that she actually uh, cleans the gym and I said you know what I saw this I know that you're struggling with that so I'm probably going to go ahead and buy it for her so that way she can use it and, and uh, we'll see if it helps her I, ho I hope it does so that is all the topics that I have for you. So let's go ahead and hit this up. Beat of the week. So this week's beat of the week is uh, Pure Water by Mustard with Migos. All right, all right. That was Pure Water by Migos. I went ahead and let that play a little bit, a little long, so that way you guys can enjoy it. And we're getting everything set up right now. So if you are close to your phone and you want to ask questions, go ahead and go on Next Rep Fitness on Facebook or on Instagram. Go on the Myler Flex um, page, so that way you can watch live right now. And so who I want to introduce right now, we're actually uh, lucky that he's, he's in town for a little bit. I'll go ahead and tell you a little story. So his, his name is Colin Jefferson. He goes by uh, uh, he, he, or Colin Joseph. <laughs> I did it. I told him I was going to do that. My next door neighbor is Colin Jefferson. <laughs> Colin Joseph. He goes by Colin Joseph Fit on Instagram. And... Um, now, let me just tell you a quick story. I, I, I'll be as real and honest about this. I didn't even know who he was until probably about four weeks ago. And what happened, I'm, you know, thumbing through my Instagram, and I see this picture of this guy, and uh, it, was a, it was actually it ended up being a video, and it was of you. It uh, looked like you were in a in a river or like maybe a waterfall was behind you you was coming out of the water and you were like ah you're like cold or something like that and i saw the way your delts were 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 formed and i was like all right i like the way his delts look and so i was like well shit i'll just go ahead hit follow so that was really i just liked the way that that your physique was looking <laughs> and um for everybody that knows me i I have never trained for aesthetics ever. I have always trained for performance. And so this last, uh, starting in September, uh, I've dropped 25 pounds and gaining muscle and all this. So now I'm actually, for the first time in my life, training for aesthetics. And so I, I just look at different body parts. And I'm like, okay, that's where I want to look. I want that. I follow people that are about 6'5 or taller, you know, that type of deal. <laughs> and so, um, I see that picture, all right? So then about a week later or something, I saw you posted another picture, and it said you, you tagged Dallas, Texas on it. And I was like, oh, shit. I, I mean, I had no clue. I was like, you're you're in Dallas? What? So then I kind of, every time you, you posted something, I was like, okay, I'll follow. I'll see what he's doing. And so this was honestly the moment where I said, all right, I want this guy on my podcast. I'm going to go. And even at, to tell you the truth, even at this point, I didn't even know, I didn't even look at like your followers. I didn't look at shit. I just was looking at you and who you were and what you're about. Didn't, didn't even really open your profile up. So I watched you, this uh, video, I think you went live. And uh, you were out washing your pickup truck and this lady comes walking by with wow. her dog. And um, I mean, do you want me to tell her? Do you do you want to tell the story? You can tell it. Okay. All right. So he he he's he sees this lady walking with the dog, and he I you you're really big time in the dogs and all that. So he sees the dog, and it was a American Staffordshire. So it kind of looks like a pit bull. I think the ears were clipped. You know that type of deal. And so Colin goes up to the lady, says, "Hey, is is it friendly? Can I pet it?" And, and she's like, "Oh yeah, definitely, totally, go for it." And so uh, he's petting the dog, and this guy is walking by, and he's like, oh, that's, that's sick. And so in the video, Colin's like, 
okay, that was odd. Like, what the hell is he talking about? You know, Collins, all you can, if you're watching live, you can tell. He's a jacked up motherfucker. He's cut, he's cut up as hell, all right? So then he had his shirt off, and he's like, I don't know, maybe he's talking about the way I look. I don't know what. And then uh, the dog's the dog's junk was just like sticking out there, I guess. So, you know, he was thinking, well, maybe it's, you know, the dog's junk. You know, that's what he's commenting about. And I guess the guy just hovered around and watched. And then the guy goes, that's disgusting. And Colin again was like, what, what the hell are you talking about? And he points at the lady. Well, the lady ended up being a, uh, a uh, transgender. Yeah. And, and so, you know, Colin gets up and he's like, what the hell you're talking you're, you're talking about her and he's like yeah and, and he's like what the fuck does this have to do with your life like how does this change anything you have going on and the guy's like well i have my right my opinion blah blah, blah. and you know you were like well i have my opinion i can whoop your ass too but i'll keep it to myself you know that type of deal but just seeing that you know when you went live right after that and um just the emotion of of what you had in that video just made me go all right because I ain't gonna lie, I'm gonna say it right here. There's a lot of douchebags in the fitness industry. I said it on my first uh, podcast, uh, this fitness industry is a very ego-driven fitness industry. That's why I don't really put myself out there with a lot of them, uh, because they're just they're just they're full of themselves. A lot of them. But when I saw that video, I was like, okay, he seems like a legit guy. He seems like somebody that I really wanted to be a part of, because I own a gym here in Dallas, and we allow of all types train here you know we I, right now i can think on my head there's a lady that's a, a cross dresser she works out here at the gym nobody gives two shits about hey. comes in here and probably more in shape than most of the people <laughs> in here that works out um well that was the thing like when like it was just like she was a, a bigger transgender or whatever yeah. like way bigger than this dude so i was like man like but like what bothered me the most was that you could tell that she was conditioned to just accept people kind of bullying her or belittling her or whatever because I was like and I was I was thinking in my head I'm like fuck if this woman wanted to she could just beat the shit out of you like yeah. like she's physically capable of doing yeah. it so but you could just tell and that's what upset me the most was I've never liked seeing people that 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 can't stand up for themselves or that feel that they can't stand up for themselves like i've always because i kind of got picked on and bullied and stuff like that when i was a kid so i, I know what it feels like and it, it's shitty so if i can help somebody out in any situation like i'll always voice my opinion or help them so that's what bothered me the most about that was that she was just conditioned to accept people essentially shitting on her yeah. for just being who she wanted to be like people as long as nobody as long as somebody's not directly impacting you or affecting you in any manner if you have a negative uh, thought or opinion just keep it to yourself like if if it's not going to aid in somebody's growth or progression don't fucking share it keep it to yourself yeah no i i, I totally agree and and so when when i watched that video i was like all right respect respect and then i i actually opened up your profile and looked at it and i was like Holy shit, this guy's somebody, you know, he seven hundred and some odd thousand followers. I was like, okay, all right. And then I was like, well, I'm just gonna take a shot and see if he even replies. And I was like, hey man, respect. I, I liked what you said. I own a gym in Dallas. It looks like you're here. See if you can come on podcast and you came on. So that 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 really shows more of the character of who you are and what you're about. So yeah, man, um, again, I, I didn't get to fully truly truly introduce you but again this is this is colin joseph he's in town just until may too so let's just go ahead and find out a little bit more about himself i'm going to be learning as well and let's just start about um you know your past where you came from uh were you involved in sports and let's just go through like high school up to you know from that point on yeah yeah for sure so i was uh i grew up in uh, like a super small town i was like maybe like five thousand people it's grown since then now but uh at the time I grew up, it was called Cold Lake. It's in central, northern, as far northern Canada as you can get. Um, yeah, and I grew up, uh, I played hockey. Everybody plays hockey in Canada. So um, grew up playing hockey from like five till 13 probably. And then I switched to football. Um, uh, I just wanted to hit more people. So <laughs> you got to hit more people playing football. So I switched to uh, football. Played uh, football. Football's not huge in Canada, so mm -hmm. like we don't have like uh, I think it's called Pee Wee and stuff like that, like mm -hmm. the kids' football yeah. and whatnot. We really only have it from like grade nine to grade twelve, 
And uh, so I played from grade nine to grade 12. At that time, uh, my dad was in the Canadian Special Forces. He was a very accredited boxer. Um, so I grew up boxing and stuff like that with my dad. And then um, I switched into uh, MMA and I started wrestling. Uh, and then after I graduated high school, I started fighting in MMA. Um, competing in jiu-jitsu competitions, grappling competitions, mission fighting and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, did that for four years-ish and then um, they, uh, so when I was a kid, uh, I got in a really bad accident and I fractured my skull and they took out a chunk of my skull. Oh wow. Yeah, it's about the size of a golf ball, it's on the, on the side of my head, so um, I have a soft spot, but uh, I never really let it affect me in anything, I, like I always played any sport, like contact sports that I wanted to and stuff like that, but um, I was uh, I was fighting in MMA. So when I was fighting in MMA, what you needed was uh, for your pre-fight medicals. You needed oh, yeah. uh, your blood work for hepatitis A, B, and C, and then like HIV. And then a doctor had to give you a physical. Um, and then uh, that was about it. But then they changed it. Um, the Edmonton Athletic Commission, the city that I was I was fighting out of, they changed their credentials or their requirements, I should say. And it was uh, they you had to get a CT scan. So obviously I couldn't pass because I had. A, chunk of my skull missing so that kind of pushed me out of that that world in the MMA sense um, and I was kind of like I'm super competitive with anything I want to do so um, I was kind of like confused as to what I was gonna compete in next and kind of like have like a physical goal and then uh, a friend of mine she was a bikini competitor and she was telling me about the men's physique comp or men's physique division that just started in like 2014 or something like that mm -hmm. um, and she's like yeah like you kind of have the build for it like you you probably do really well at it so I just kind of did my first competition and then uh, I ended up doing another and another and I ended up competing like 11 or 12 times um, and then uh, that's kind of how I got to where I am today I suppose that's my yeah. brief uh, sports background yeah 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 so when did you actually get into training and you know not just focusing on yourself but going and training other people and becoming a trainer oh for like personal training and stuff yeah. yeah so I um when I was 18 like I uh, my my plan was to uh, I want to go to the special forces route and join the army and stuff like that kind of like with my dad and then uh, I got into a little bit of trouble uh, I got like uh, I got in a bar fight and I Got a really bad assault cause in bodily harm and grievance charge. Mm -hmm. um, got a five-year criminal record and like two years probation and uh, had to pay like seventy thousand dollars and um, wasn't allowed travel or wasn't allowed. Um, I had a year of conditions every Friday. I had to check in and stuff okay. like that. I had to spend a little time in jail. But um, so that kind of like fucked me over for the military aspect because yeah. at the time they were they weren't allowing people criminal records in. So I got into the oil field. Uh, I started welding, so I was, a, okay. I was a, a pipe welder for like six, six and a half years. -ish. Right, that's some hard work there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially when you're up in the middle of northern Canada. So um, yeah, I did that, and then but at the same time I was still like training and fighting MMA and stuff like that when I would come back. But um, I started kind of taking a passion for. Um, I wasn't accredited or anything like that. Mm -hmm. um, I was like I was always interested in working out and stuff. So I was doing some strength and conditioning, just helping out some of the other MMA fighters and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, a little unknown fact: MMA fighters definitely do not have much money. So I was just, <laughs> I was just helping them out out of like, yeah. I wanted to see them succeed and help push them and stuff like that. So um, yeah, that kind of sparked my interest into personal training and stuff. That was probably in 2013, 14 ish or something like that. And mm -hmm. then, uh, oh no, no, that would have been 2012, 2013. And then 2014, I. Uh, just said fuck it and I quit the oil field and I moved to the other side of Canada. I was chasing a girl and then uh, I had no game plan, no money saved, nothing. It was uh, it was definitely sink or swim type situation. Yeah. Um, so I showed up in a different country, or sorry, not country, different province. Um, didn't know anybody, had no plan. And uh, I just started kind of, social media was big and my social media was kind of taken off because um, I went through, previous to that, um, before I met the girl, I went to like a, a year detox where I was like abstinent for a year. I wanted no, no exterior. Um, uh, I didn't want to be uh, distracted. I didn't yeah. want any exterior distractions. So I was just focused on my personal growth, and I read, and I, I was doing different uh, seminars and Tony Robbins courses and stuff like that. And then, uh, so I grew my social media following. People just, I was just, I used it as an outlet to share my thoughts and opinions, mm -hmm. and it just grew organically from that. And then. Uh, I got to Ontario was the province that I moved to on the other side of Canada and then uh, yeah and then I started my personal training there and I, I started my online there and it I started quickly understanding how to market properly and brand and um, 
yeah, from there it, it just grew. And then uh, I was training at a studio um, that my girlfriend, the girl that I went there for, she owned a studio previously. Okay. She was a personal trainer, so I started bringing on clients there and doing one-on-ones. But then uh, I kind of just stopped. I, I didn't want to trade time for dollars. Mm -hmm. So I started, uh, I kind of pulled back more and went onto the online route. What, what year was that? Uh, that would have been 2014. Uh, yeah, 2014. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I did that. I was in Ontario for, like, I dated her for, like, three years. And then uh, we split up amicably. And uh, then I came back to my province of Alberta. And then I just continued my online training stuff like that. So okay, yeah. Now in, in Canada, do they have different certifications than they do here in the United States? Um, yeah, yeah they definitely do. Um, you can get like a U.S. one, like NASM or something yeah. like that. And you can use it in Canada and stuff. Um, what I did was I did my strength conditioning, my personal training through CanFit, which is like a Canadian okay um, certification type thing. Yeah. But um, I don't think it's the most knowledgeable. I would say the most knowledge that I've I've acquired was just from researching and, and mm -hmm. reading articles and published articles and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, it was a good foundation, obviously, yeah. and it kind of just allows you to have liability when you start your own business and you can get insurance and stuff like yeah. that. So yeah. it's... The, I, the I totally, step. I totally agree with that too. I mean, you know, I, I teach the NASM cert, yeah. and you know, I tell all the students, guys, this is just the tip of the iceberg. Yeah, yeah, I yeah, mean, yeah. this is just enough to get you going, uh, but there's so much to learn outside of what this book tells you. So well, it's totally. like everything in life. Like if you're into real estate, like you can do a real estate course, but you're going to learn so much more just by researching different marketing strategies mm -hmm. and branding and sales strategies and stuff. So yeah, the the knowledge and the the process of learning never ever ends. Yeah. How old are you? Uh, I'm 30. 30? Okay, I'm 38. So we kind of got a different, probably a view on how marketing and all that is done uh, compared to when you kind of got into, got into the game and started doing it. So let's talk about, like when you said your following started, like really what was the thing, what was that moment that changed your, because really you, you haven't, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, but you really haven't done the old school, get on the pavement, you know, really pass out those flyers. And, you know, it's really <laughs> your advertising has been through social, right? Yeah. Yeah. So what was that, that one that thing that you mouth. did? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, what's that one thing that you have done that, that, I mean, got you from having 50 followers to now over 700,000? I paid people for information. Yeah. Like if I don't know how to do something, I'm not gonna try to. I'm gonna pay the smartest person I know yeah. to tell, like an Andy Frizzella or a Ryan Stuman or um, Ed Milet or something, somebody like that. I'm gonna get into a mastermind group. I'm gonna invest in myself because I know there's a massive ROI in yeah. following somebody that's already doing what you're you want to know. So um, I was just paying attention to people that were crushing it and seemed to be knowledgeable in marketing or sales or whatever it may be and then I would reach out to them and I'd be like hey and like around the time that I got into um, into the online space and stuff there weren't really many mastermind groups or at least yeah. I wasn't aware of many it was kind of difficult like now you can like you can see like, pretty easy back then it's probably more just like Tony Robbins was probably yeah, yeah. one of the biggest ones yeah and like I'm, I'm still big in Tony Robbins and stuff like I, I went to many of his uh, I went with his to his date with destiny is uh, unleash the power within okay I, I went to a lot of his seminars and you learn a lot from them. obviously there's a huge return on investment from them um, but there's obviously a financial investment. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, they're yeah. not cheap. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. But like, info, I'll always pay for information. I'll pay to save time. Okay. Um, so that was kind of what I did. I would I would do as much research as I possibly could, figure out, um, this was before analytics and stuff like that. Like now that face, or sorry, well, Facebook and Yeah, they do too. Yeah. yeah, they have the analytics. Um, but like before that, like you, you kind of had to figure out your own best posting times and when things are doing well. And like, oh, I post on, Monday at 3 p.m. or 2 p.m. and it was kind of a shitty like I didn't get much engagement so and understanding it now the algorithm always changes and stuff like that mm -hmm. so yeah like I just I did as much research as possible and I I remember staying awake for hours and hours and reading and fucking around on my Instagram making posts taking them down figuring out like what was the best what was what was the most value I could provide to somebody that, because value is going to be why they follow you. Yeah. Value and relatability. Yeah. So as long as, like, and I've always said this, I'll, I'll always just be me because I don't want you to like me for who I'm not. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would rather be me, and if you like me, cool. And if you don't like me, all right, well, I don't care. So yeah, I'll, yeah, I'll yeah. still continue doing my thing. Yeah, um, you know, I've, I've, I'm still, I mean, probably the people that, that have been really watching and following me in the last year or so, it's really, I, I haven't been hardcore on just that social media aspect, you know, being on every single platform. You know, like I said, I'm from the day where you were putting ads in newspapers, you are walking around, you know, giving your business card around. And I, I still tell my students that, that I have in my class, I'm like, listen, I still think you need to do that because, for instance, this morning I saw a, a um, uh, on Google, I saw one of the stories, and there's this girl, I've never heard of her, but she's got millions of followers on Instagram, and, and she is bawling and crying her eyes out. Uh, because Instagram shut her profile down. And she's, I mean, got this video. She's just bawling because she's like, I don't know how to do anything else. I don't know how to, I don't I don't have skills to have a real job. This is where my money is. Uh, I guess she's got two two little kids and she's like, they've got to turn my, my, my social media back on. This is where I get it. And I think, uh, you know, I, I've, even the trainers that work here, I'm like, guys, you've got to, you never know what's gonna happen Facebook might shut down for a second. You know, it did uh, what a month ago. Yeah. Instagram, Facebook went down, and the world went crazy, right? So I think you still gotta be strong. And I've always said, hey, I'll never go starving because I know how to go on the streets. I know how to get get clients. How to how to actually talk to people face to face. Yeah. And so it's really interesting to meet people that have never seen that side of of, of marketing and advertising that have just strictly been on social media and going that route. Yeah, and and, and I wish I was stronger at it. Like. You guys are like, like you're talking about time of day. You're like, I think about that, but I'm just like, hey, I'm just happy to get something out. <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah, and like, it's always funny because, uh, like, I didn't get into social media until I was like probably 25. So, like, yeah, I worked, I worked like fucking like 30 days straight in the coldest place on the planet, working like 12, 14 hour days. Like, shitty work. Like, yeah. you get paid well, obviously, because yeah. you're doing like oil field work and stuff. But, like, you're working your dick off. <laughs> so, uh, it's always funny. I, I go to these expos, and it was funny. I, I was a. Uh, I won't name any names. Anyways, I was at an expo, and they asked us to, um, to like rip open boxes and and hang some bags, like like you know the bags they give you yeah, like the yeah. lumpy and stuff. Yeah. And I was like, oh okay, cool. Like all right, fucking grab the box, start ripping off, like ripping off the the plastic wrapping and whatnot. And uh, some of the guy, it was the it was the guys that like the guys were struggling, and they were like, oh this this hurts my hands, yeah. and like they're like I'm not supposed to do this, like this isn't my job scope and stuff. I'm like. You just have to open up a, a fucking box and like pull out some bags and hang them. That, that's all you have to do. Yeah. We had to do it for like 20 minutes and like there's like 15 people complaining. And But then it dawned on me. I'm like, well, you guys have never had a real job. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, you guys have never actually like worked like hard. You guys have been influencers like since you turned 18. And yeah. like, yeah, so it's just a different mindset. Totally. Shift. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah. And that comes back because it always makes me wonder. I'm like, if somebody deleted your hacked your Instagram and wiped it all off like what would you do to survive yeah yeah like me I can go back to oil field I, I fuck I can do a lot of different things yeah, yeah. so like I always like think about that I don't ever want to obviously yeah <laughs> yeah yeah definitely yeah yeah but I always think about that and like it's just uh like come back from like even the age difference and stuff mm -hmm. so like me to like 23 year old influencers and stuff they've only ever been influencers which Yes, it's a job, but like it's yeah. If somebody takes away your, your social media account, like what are you gonna do? Like, this girl's flipping out. Well, yeah, because <laughs> yeah. you have so much invested in it, and that's all you know. Yeah. So that's why I always say like I'm always reading, I'm always posting, I'm like I want to add as much value into my life to be so valuable that I anybody I meet I can help them out. I can I can help you refer you to a doctor that I met one time that could help you with an ailment you have, or I want to learn how to build something. So if you ever need hand with your your vehicle or something like that. I want to have as much tools in my toolbox and that's mm -hmm. that's kind of like something my dad always taught me. Like my dad can do everything. Yeah. Like there isn't anything that I could be like, hey like do you know how to do this? And, well, maybe social media. He's yeah, yeah, yeah. Media. But yeah, yeah like, my, my parents barely know how to turn the computer on. Oh, yeah, yeah. He, like, and I try to explain to my dad like what I do because I have like a marketing company and like a consulting company and then like a personal training. But it's okay. all like tied online. Yeah. And my dad's like, I have no idea what you do. I was like, yeah. don't even worry about that. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah. He can like barely get on Facebook and like that's like a good accomplishment for him. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, like 
you should always be trying and I always preach it like 1% better every day like try to add as much value emotionally spiritually financially personally like as you possibly can into yourself that way you have more value to give back to people like to make them happier make them more successful make them feel more loved and understand it so yeah definitely definitely so let's talk about because I I do it myself but obviously I'm not as successful as you are but I have my own app and I do online personal training as well but there's no way in the world that I can just go straight just online you know so what was that point where you because you, you don't really train anybody like in person anymore do you or do you still do that every once in a while I will every once in a while like if it's like a friend of mine or something or just like so the way I kind of structure with my personal training is I set up consultation calls and then I'll, I'll talk to them because I want to I want to connect with them so I, want, I still want that connection yeah and I want them to know that they're actually working with me because a lot of these big influencers they just they take people's money and they dump them off on another personal trainer mm -hmm. like pay them 20% or something like that yeah so I want my clients to know that they're actually working with me and I get that sense of fulfillment because I'm connecting with another person so I always ask people and then sometimes people be like well I need a one-on-one -on -one. and if they're in my city I'll be like yeah absolutely like I'll, I'll meet up with you and I'll work out with you but it's kind of like I pick and choose who I want to do that with type yeah. thing yeah yeah so like if I like if they're not gonna waste my time like I know they're 100% serious and committed and like mm -hmm. They're gonna work their ass off. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll fucking come and I'll work out with you, or I'll help you, or train you. So, and you said you started really doing that in 2014. Uh, well, yeah, like I was kind of doing it in 2013 for like a year, doing the strength conditioning with the MMA fighters and yeah. stuff. But like, I wasn't getting paid or anything like that. Yeah. <laughs> or like yeah. they pay me like bare minimum type thing. I was more so just doing it because I enjoyed hanging out with the guys and still training with them and stuff like yeah, that yeah um but yeah it was like 2014 2000 halfway through 2013 and that and that was about that point that's when you could just totally rely on your online training or it no still went so like longer. i had no idea i was like i just quit i went from like because you make good money in the oil field yeah. um <laughs> i just went from like i think i made like one hundred and eighty thousand dollars or one hundred seventy thousand dollars that year my last year in the oil field and then uh, i just said fuck it and i was like well let's see what happens like i'm gonna go take a risk and invest in myself i wanted more freedom i wanted to follow my passion so um yeah i didn't know how it was gonna play out but yeah i was able to and that's what made me so passionate i had that like you know that sink or swim type uh, yeah. mentality so i figured out how to market and brand myself and and, and structure how my business so yeah that's what i did and so i saw i and, and i had this question that i wanted to ask you and i i even told my wife i was like man i don't what I want to ask, it, it, it's not bad at all, but it's going to sound so, so stupid and, and I, not demeaning, but just like slap in the face in the same way. But yesterday you posted a, a video and I was like, all right, I think you're going to be legit with me on this. Um, you, you went live and the first thing I think you even said was, hey, I'm doing this video shirtless because I know I'm going to get more people watching yeah, yeah. because I'm shirtless. So do you honestly feel... Th that you're getting more online clients and, and I want you to answer this for like maybe other aspiring trainers out there because I used to I, I've told this story many times back in the day when I was a nice, nice young buck and I was a little bit more built than what I was <laughs> I could walk in North Park Mall here not have anything of personal training on just normal clothes and people would walk up to me oh, man you a trainer you a trainer and then I got you know I started training and, and I was more worried about my business and training my clients more than working out for myself yeah. so I kind of let myself go and then I could go you know a few years later I'd go inside North Park Mall and I would have trainer and all this stuff on there and <laughs> a couple people may say oh yeah you train where you train at blah blah but before they were always oh man yeah, yeah. all right so I kind of understand what that's like and so how much do you really accredit your physique at getting these clients I would say if it, it does obviously play play a role because like you're gonna want to work with somebody that obviously has a physique that you aspire to have or at least they look like I cause I have female clients like obviously they don't, they don't want to look like yeah, me yeah but like they they can look and be like all right he knows what he's doing he takes care of himself and obviously like i'm sharing value and stuff on social media so they know that and, that, and, and that's where i think because uh, the reason why i told my wife i think this is going to sound bad because it's almost questioning do you just have the looks and not the smarts and the intelligence to go with it no so like no and that, that's a perfectly like acceptable like cool answer or sort of question to ask 
So, but the thing is, is like just because, and I always tell everybody this: just because you're getting attention or engagement with likes and comments, that doesn't correlate to business. Yeah. Yeah. So like, and like with Bang Energy, I'll use them for an example. Just because you're showing your ass on a video and you got a million views on that video, that's not a million sale, a million cans being sold. Yeah. That's probably not even fucking one percent of that they're just people watching and, and engaging because of the content not yeah. of the product yeah so yes and no like yes my physique does help me be, but it's because like i've put the time and effort and dedication into like producing this physique yeah but at the same time you still have to give somebody value to bring in a client so where, where did you and you feel you give the value and the knowledge through your your videos on social media and stuff so that way they can trust hey this is the person i want not only do they look that way but yeah a lot of it comes down to and i always say like anything with sales is people do business with people that they like mm -hmm. or people that they trust so if they trust you and they, they like you, they're gonna do business with you. So give them value and be yourself, be relatable. Like who follows you may not like to follow me because they follow you and they like your story and like what, what you post about and what you talk about and your thoughts and opinions. Mm -hmm. So like I always say like your ideal client isn't my ideal client and vice versa. Yeah. yeah. Even though we're in the same business, yeah. but who you bring in is gonna be different than me. Yeah. So I always just say to be as relatable as possible, add value and then understand how to market yourself and like yeah. find your niche yeah yeah so like that's your ideal client is you just need to know how to understand how to speak to your ideal client yeah yeah definitely definitely so speaking of like like your ideal client who is that for you like do you really like to just train with people that are competing or, or prepping for a show or just like to just bodybuild in general do you just take the the average person that wants to lose 20 30 pounds like who's those type of people you like to take yeah the I usually work with a lot of busy business professionals okay um, because I, I put a lot of time into people so like my packages are gonna be more expensive than somebody that just gives you a cookie cutter bullshit package cause yeah I'm giving you my time I'm working with you I'm, I'm on video FaceTime calls with you I'm checking in with you so I structure mine different like I, I want to give more value to you so um, usually business professionals busy business professionals I'll, I'll do um, uh, competitors every once in a while but I kind of like to do I, I always like to do my consultation calls because like I don't I'm not starving to have clients mm -hmm. like so I like to kind of pick and choose and like chat with a person see like who they are what the personality is like and you can usually get a sense of somebody's commitment level I don't want to work with you if you're going to fucking half-ass it because then you're not going to get the results that I know you can get yeah. and my product isn't going to look as good yeah. and you're not going to be as happy. So yeah. like, I want to work with somebody that's going to work their ass off. They're going to crush their goals and if they're winning, I'm winning. So yeah. it's a win-win for everybody. Um, that's kind of how I, and that's why I do my consultation calls and stuff like that. With, with those calls and, and you said with FaceTime and all that, is this a daily thing or once a week or how do you run your, your online training? Part? Um, Like with the FaceTimes, it's usually like t once or twice a week. Okay. So I usually do them on Wednesdays or uh, Fridays and Saturdays. Yeah. But then like they got my number and like they call me, if they want to call me and ask me something or text me, like yeah. So there's always 24 seven support in that, mm -hmm. in that manner. Mm -hmm. But yeah, like it's it's usually twice a week for and FaceTimes. How do, you, how do you deliver the workouts to them? Uh, it's just like an email like so I'll, I'll create their customized training program whatever their goals may be if it's a I was just speaking to a guy earlier today he wanted to um, lose like 20 pounds in the next 90 days and he wanted to be more functional he was a marathon runner mm -hmm. um, but he also wanted to have an aesthetic physique build up his chest and like have more confidence build up his delts stuff like that um, so like I would I have a very thorough application I send out after I do my consultation call and choose if I'm going to work with somebody. Yeah. They fill that out, comes back to me, that's how I create their programs and their uh, nutritional approach. So I also like to create their nutritional approach based off of their lifestyle because I, that's what I was talking about in the video was um, any nutritional approach or diet will essentially work for somebody barring the fact that you don't have any like adverse health concerns or something like that. But what's important is choosing one that has the most longevity. So yeah. I personally do intermittent fasting. I've done mm -hmm. ketogenic dieting. Uh, did not work for me. Like, yeah. It worked like for my goal, but it only worked for like a month. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah. it wasn't sustainable for me because I didn't enjoy it. Yeah. So uh, it was 
turned into a basically a crash diet. But for you, you like ketogenic yeah. dieting, so that, that that that's what. The yeah, most I do. I do both. Is. I do. Uh, I do twelve hour fast every day. At oh, least okay. a minimum of that. And, and then, then you I incorporate the ke ketogenic. Yeah. Oh, okay. Cool. Yeah. yeah. yeah like I, I do sixteen and eight. So mm -hmm. I eat from two p.m. to ten p.m. Mm -hmm. and then I fast the rest. Okay. Yeah. yeah so I just I, my life is so crazy and everywhere. So I I just don't commit to that. Like you know that those specific time slots. I just say whenever my last bite was, I don't eat again for twelve oh, okay, hours. Okay, okay, okay. That's just, that's just how how I roll and well, I way I got get up so early in the morning and who knows what the hell I got going on. So I just say, hey, my busy lifestyle. This just works for me and and it, it had you know and then all the the research on the reason why I even started um, you know doing the fasting wasn't for a calorie cut or nothing like that. I still eat a good amount, but it was to raise the human growth hormone. Yeah, like so raising your human, human growth hormone, there's a ton of neurological benefits, there's a ton of heart benefits, mm -hmm. there's, there's so many benefits to intermittent fasting. So um, yeah, and that's why a lot of my busy business professionals, like they, they generally do intermittent fasting too, yeah. just because they're busy and mm -hmm. it, it, it also gives you a little bit more balance. Mm -hmm. Like you can have, it's hard to eat like 2,300 calories in like an eight hour window. Mm -hmm. like. And I have like 34. Especially if they're healthy calories. Yeah. 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 So like, <laughs> that's why like, I'm usually like, I'll eat like as much whole foods as I can. And then like kind of near the end of the night, I'm like, well, like I can have a brownie or something or like mm -hmm. I can fit in like something that I enjoy or if I want to have a patio beer or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it kind of gives you a little bit more balance too. Yeah. Um, because like, why don't, life's about being happy, <laughs> like having longevity, like yeah. going out and having those moments. Like I've done the. I've competed like 12 times, so I've done the, the five meals a day and none of this, none of that, none of this. And then like you miss out on so many opportunities of life and, and like connection and stuff like yeah. that by yeah. just kind of being miserable, I suppose. Yeah, you, know, you, you heard me talking about the, the 75 hard. And, yeah, and, yeah. And you know, you know Andy yeah. over at First Form and um, you know, I told one of my clients this week, I said, I honestly, I don't think I'd be able to do the 75 hard. Uh, without doing keto because I still have those like keto desserts so it gives me that little I feel like I'm cheating but I'm not yeah yeah, yeah. but it's because you know because I like to have a beer every once in yeah, a while yeah. I like to have what so now I'm not drinking at all for 75 days and so that's why I say I think that's the only way I'm able to to, to do these 75 days without drinking is because of that it gives me a few little cheats there um, but it's crazy so I, I posted a picture like today is like I said today's day 17 and I posted a uh, day one day 14 change and really the only differences that I've been doing since for the last six months is I'm actually drinking a full gallon of water a day before I was probably doing about two and a half liters of three um, I was already working out an hour and a half but I was only doing uh, weight training four days a week and cardio five days a week. So I was doing an hour of weight training and then 30 minutes those four days and then 45 minutes on my on my day off from weight training. And I only do list cardio, just don't get my heart rate over 70%. You know, so that's all I was doing. So now I'm training seven days a week. Uh, you know, both of them, I still do the weight training for about an hour, but then you gotta do the outdoor one for 45 minutes. So now, oh, is that what it is? The yeah. second one has it to be outdoors. Has to be outdoor, no matter what. Rain, sleet, snow, whatever. Oh, okay, you have to do that outdoor. And so, um, and then the third thing that that I'm doing now that I haven't been for the last six months is no alcohol at all. And I, I mean, just in those 14 days, uh, even though I've lost a total of like I think 31 pounds and I've gained about 12 pounds, or I'm sorry, uh, eight pounds of muscle. That's awesome. It, it's. Uh, in those 14 days just making those few little tweaks yeah. to totally my physique has changed just by that which is it's crazy so in your training how many like for yourself are you just at a maintenance place where you're like hey i like where i'm at now or are you uh trying to go a, a, a different direction and you're training a lot more what, what are you doing right now um so like i just set the goal and like i kind of just started posting about it like i was trying to <laughs> i did uh so my my girlfriend rachel she's a uh, the registered dietitian she mm -hmm. has a um what's it called an in body scan okay, so yeah. it's not as accurate as a DEXA scan but it was it's still relatively yeah, accurate yeah. <laughs> I did it, and I was like, I was like, yeah, I'm probably like 10, percent and then like I got like 13 percent body fat. And I was like, oh shit, that's way higher than I thought it'd be. So like I was like, all right, I want to get that down to like about eight. Yeah. So my my goal was to in the next like six weeks to maintain, uh, because I'm about 190 pounds. Yeah. Uh, I wanted to maintain about 190 pounds and try to lower my my body fat to about eight percent. Yeah. Um, 
I'll probably lose a couple pounds, obviously, but my, my goal is to stay around 190. Okay. Yeah, so that's kind of my goal is to lose uh, a little when, bit more. But. When you got here and I was giving you a little tour of the gym, I told you that, that I trained some NFL guys, and uh, this one guy, his name is Brian Brayman. He played for Philadelphia Eagles when they won the Super Bowl. He yeah. played for him for four years. Well, when I met him, I was like, finally, there's somebody that I'm like, I, that's what I want to look like because he's about as tall as I am. Okay. Yeah. You know, in the fitness world, you know, once you push about 5'11", it's kind of kind of tough to find people yeah, that are like, yeah, yeah. you know, and, unless you like The Rock, and you know, I think he's doing a little extra. But anyways, uh, it, I, when I saw Brian, I was just like, that's what I want. And I had him go do the DEXA, and I really wanted to see what his his numbers were. Yeah, yeah, what, yeah. What, what are you really? And he was 11% body fat, 235 pounds. His lean mass was uh, 198. <laughs> so I was like, okay, now I know my numbers. Yeah, yeah, yeah That's yeah. where I want to be. So actually, uh, you know, I did the DEXA back in uh, October, and I was – 24% body fat. I was fat as hell. So now um, I'm, we're trying to go in on Saturday. So yeah. I'll, Saturday I'll post and see what my update is, how my change has been, and, and how how I'm comparing to Brian right now. But yeah, he's like exactly where I want to be at that height. You know. Yeah, so. there's like especially when you get taller, like the physiques are harder to find. Like, uh, like and I, I don't want to say an attainable physique, but like a desired physique. Yeah. It's like it is. It is more difficult to put on more muscle mass. Because you have to put on so much more because your limbs are longer. Yeah. Do you know who, um, fuck, what's his name? Uh, Robert Timms is. Robert Timms, huh? Uh, he, I think he was actually like the first um, pro men's physique classic guy. He was okay. the first guy to get his pro card when they created that. I think so. Don't quote me on it. But uh, I competed against him in the Arnold's in like 2014 or something. Okay. No, sorry, I shouldn't say I competed against him. He was a men's physique competitor. He was huge. He was like 6'5 or 6'4. Yeah. And like he was like a foot taller than everybody when we were walking in the back and he's mad he was like 250 pounds and he was like three percent body fat and just like massive and i remember like looking at him and i was like what are you competing in because like i thought he was doing like bodybuilding he's like oh, i'm doing men's physique and i'm like you're so goddamn big you're not gonna do good and he's like what i was like your weight like he was massive yeah. and like and then sure enough when classic came out i was like oh this is like built for him yeah like yeah. just because he's so tall like but for him to be a bodybuilder, he'd have to be like 340 pounds or something like that, yeah. which is absolutely. There, there's amazing. another guy you may you may know who he is. He's actually with the first form guys, Danny Jones. He's uh, uh he he trains at the Mecca in is California. He an Asian dude? No, no, just oh, a, okay. He's he's about six seven, and I mean he's. Just, oh yeah, I know Danny. Yeah 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 yeah, 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 yeah. So he's another guy that I'm like, all right, you know, he I kind of follow him and be like, yeah, that's that's kind of where I want to go. You know, yeah, yeah, so. I know, yeah, because I remember I followed Danny for like a long time. This was years ago. I was following him on social media, and then I met him at the Olympia. And I uh -huh. didn't know he was so tall. Yeah, I thought he was like my height, and I'm like five nine. So like when I met him, he's like, hey man, how's it going? He was like waving to me. I was like. <laughs> You're fucking huge. <laughs> I didn't know yeah. he was that tall because he's yeah. like pretty proportionate. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, I know Danny. Yeah, cool, cool, cool. <laughs> That's funny. Well, it looks like because uh, I know you said you gotta get out. You got some uh, business calls to yeah. make. It's 1:40 right now. So, dude, I want to just tell you thanks for taking time yeah, out, sure, man. coming on my little old podcast. Um, I hope I don't know if we missed some people ask questions, but if you got anything, please comment on his stuff. If you guys want to comment on Myler Flex, please do. We'll answer back. And. Um, Hey, go ahead, let everybody else, if they don't know, how can they follow you, how can they get a hold of you, all that good stuff. Yeah, just uh, on social media, it's Colin, C-O-L-L-I-N, and then Joseph, J-O-S-E-P-H, underscore fit. So Colin, Joseph, underscore fit. And then, um, yeah, just hit me up there, follow me there. And if you got any questions on personal training or anything, shoot me a question, or shoot me a DM, I should say. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Well, guys, thanks for listening. And if you aren't listening live, just give me a couple days. I'll get this video posted on YouTube, or you can go on Spotify and listen here in about another hour or so. So until next time, keep repping and flexing. Hey guys, do me a big favor and go follow My Look Flex on Instagram and Facebook. And if you want more videos of the podcast or workout videos, follow the Myler Flexing Podcast on YouTube and hit that subscribe button. Until next time, keep repping and flexing.